There's yttrium, ytterbium, actinium, rubidium, a boron, gadolinium, niobium, iridium, and strontium, and silicon, and silver, and samarium, and bismuth, chromium, lithium, beryllium, and barium. I want to start this video with going over the two terms we mentioned last video, chlorofluorocarbons and halons. Chlorofluorocarbons were examples of halo alkanes, and they had no hydrogens in their structure, and they had plenty of these chlorines and fluorines, right? So the, here we have two isomers. They have the same chemical structure, so both have three chlorines and, and three fluorines, but their actual positioning is different, right? So here we have three here, whereas here they're in a different position. That's what an isomer is. And these chlorofluorocarbons are really dangerous for our atmosphere, especially for our ozone. We're going to go over that in the next couple of videos. But what I want you to know is what chlorofluorocarbons are. They have carbon backbone, then they have chlorine and fluorine attached to their structure, and they have no hydrogens. And also halons. Halons were bromofluorocarbons, so they have bromine and fluorine in their actual structure. And sometimes they also have a chlorine, chlorine attached as well. And that was a halon. We mentioned those two in the last video. And the reason why I mention all this is because we have this dot point. We have to identify the origins of chlorofluorocarbons, or CFCs, and halons in the atmosphere. And one of the most popular CFCs that was used was not these here, but was actually something that looked similar to this, and that is CFC 11, and we're going to talk about that more in the future. This is the one that is most commonly used. All right, we have to talk about the origins. So uh, chlorofluorocarbons, they were used mainly in, in air conditionings, units, so air conditioners, refrigerants, so refrigerators, so they were used as a refrigerant to cool things down. And they were also used in propellants in spray cans. So you can see if you press here, something comes out, and the CFCs made that happen. So they gave the energy to make the actual liquid come out. And also they were used as cleaning for electronics. So the electronic dashboards that were used in, you know, your computers and your t televisions. Um, it was found that chlorofluorocarbons are quite effective at actually cleaning them. And the reason why they were used is because initially we were using as a refrigerant, we were using ammonia, but ammonia is quite reactive and it's also quite toxic. And that means that that poses a problem. You don't want to use ammonia if it's really reactive and toxic. And chlorofluorocarbons were found to be less reactive and less toxic than your actual ammonia alternative. So they were actually inert. Inert means they don't react. So that was seen as a positive, but I'll go over the next couple of videos why inert being inert was actually a problem eventually for ozone. But the reason why chlorofluorocarbons were used were it was less reactive than ammonia and less toxic and also also easy to liquefy, which for refrigerants and air conditioning units was quite effective because that's what goes like the actual liquid part is what goes around in the back of your for example, your refrigerator, and what cools down everything else. Right? So you need to have it be a liquid, and chlorofluorocarbons were easy to liquefy. Now, there's a couple of dates. You don't need to remember these dates, but I'll just give you just a chronological order of when they were introduced and when they were phased out, the chlorofluorocarbons. The chlorofluorocarbons were kind of first used in the 1930s, and that was initially as a refrigerant. So it was used as a refrigerant to actually replace ammonia. Then after 1945, they were also used in, this, in spray cans, so spray cans, and when the air conditioning units were introduced, they were also used as air conditioning coolers. And then by 1960s, we had more and more electronics, so they really started to be used as well in the cleaning of electronic material, so cleaning electronics, and that was 1960s. But then by 1996, we had a protocol, so an agreement to phase out CFCs. So we wanted to make sure that CFCs were gone, not used anymore. And one of the reasons why was because of something called the ozone depletion potential. And again, I'll talk about that more in the next couple of videos as well. But the chlorofluorocarbons are basically harmful for ozone. And that was discovered roughly in the 1970s, 1980s. And they were phased out by 1996. Right, but it says identify the origins of chlorofluorocarbons. They were used as refrigerants, so that those are the things that cool down your temperature in your refrigerator, 
and the same kind of purpose in the air conditioning unit. And they were used in propellants and spray cans, and they were used to clean electronics. And this was kind of the sequence of events. 1930 was initially introduced, and more and more, um, more and more, sort of things were introduced eventually in terms of, you know, first it was for refrigerants, then for air conditioning, then for spray cans, then for electronics, etc., etc. et, cetera, et cetera. But by 1996, they were phased out. And the reasons why were because they're less toxic than ammonia, less and less reactive, which was considered to be a good thing, and they were easy to liquefy. That was for your chlorofluorocarbons, and your halons are your fire, they're used in fire extinguishers, so their origins were the fire extinguishers, and they were also phased out by 1994, so this was when they were phased out. For chlorofluorocarbons, it was 1996, and for halons, it was 994, because they were also found to have a pretty high ozone depletion potential, which means they were dangerous for our ozone. For this top one, all you really need to know is what they're being used for. So the chlorofluorocarbons were being used for these different things, air conditioning units, refrigerants, propellants and spray cans, and electronics, cleaning electronics, whereas halons were mainly used for fire extinguishers. They were used in the case of chlorofluorocarbons before 1996, in the case of halons before 1994, because they were considered to be having a high ozone depletion potential, which we'll cover in the next couple of videos, and that means that they were damaging to the ozone. I hope that was useful. Thank you for watching.